Hi, it's uh, Rhonda again from Funky Freaks and today we have part two of our crochet long hippo pattern. So we're looking at the body, we did the head um, and now we're looking at completing the body. This will be the final product. Um, we'll have the, the legs and the arms attached to the body in this video. Uh, it's really cute. The head you would have done last time with the eyes. And this is the finished product that I've got here with a little dress on and I'll put the pattern on for that dress when I get around to doing that in the next week or so. We'll also have the tail to add to the base of the body as well. And uh, this is the yarn that we're going to be using. The same yarn that I used in part one of the video recommending anywhere between a 3.25 and a 4 millimeter hook or needle but we're using a 3 millimeter hook today that's the color and the qr code if you're needing that okay let me get that out of the way and we shall start on our part two of our hippo project Okay, so you can either start with a magic ring um, or you can start with a four chain loop. In the magic ring, you want to place five single crochet. Alternatively, like I say, you can use the, um, the four chain loop would we'll start with a slip stitch like this. And you would add four chains, one, two, three, and four. And you would join by slip stitching into the first chain to make a little ring, to look, make a little loop. And you would work into that little loop. You can just see the space there where you'd work into. So completely slip stitch and you'd work into the center here. We want five single crochet to start the head and we're working top down so this is the neck so there's your first single crochet second working over that tail remember like we did in part one of the video that way whilst you're working over the top of the tail you'll be able to pull that tail up nice and tightly and close the hole just like a magic ring Just like that. So tugging very gently on that tail piece you'll be able to close the hole up. So you'll have five single crochet stitches in that first round. Three, four, five. So I'll be working in that fifth stitch. And the second round is increasing so we need to put two single crochet into each stitch. So you'll have 10 single crochet stitches at the end of this round. So here's our first increase. That's one. And two. Three. And four two stitches into that stitch, two stitches into the next, five and six, two stitches into the next, seven and eight, and two stitches into the last stitch there. That's your last increase, so you'll have ten single crochet. Pulling that up a little bit tighter, that's the back of the work there. Okay, so we've got 10 stitches all the way around here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 
So the tenth stitch is the one we're going to be working into. So round three is another increase round, but it's a, a single crochet and then an increase, single crochet and then an increase, and you repeat that all the way around. Right, so that stitch there is my last one of the last round. So I want a single crochet in there. And then in the next stitch, we're going to be doing an increase. So there's two single crochet in here. One, two. And then we repeat that pattern. So single crochet in the first. And then an increase in this stitch here. So two single crochet in this stitch. single crochet in this one and increase in the next so that's three we do this five times so this is our fourth time so single crochet in that stitch and then an increase in the next and this is the last time so single crochet here and increase in the last stitch and you should have 15 stitches here all the way around and that's your round three so just counting those stitches around you should have 15. okay now round four we're going to start with two single crochet so one single crochet in the first another single crochet in the second and then we want an increase in the next stitch so two single crochets in this stitch here and then we want single crochet and increase six times so that's the first time so single crochet here And an increase here. It's the second time. Single crochet here. Increase in the next. Single crochet here. Increase in the next. Single crochet here. Increase in the next. Single crochet increase there we go and at the end of that you should have 22 stitches all the way around then we're going to single crochet and then increase and we want to do that four times okay so we've done it once we want to do it three more times single crochet increase single crochet increase single crochet increase and then to finish off we want two single crochets so there's the first single crochet and then in the next stitch another single crochet and you'll have 26 stitches all the way around so just double check make sure you count the stitches okay now for the next rounds it's just going to be single crochet in each of these stitches around so just double check that you do have the right number of stitches so 26 stitches Okay. so we want to single crochet into rounds six seven and eight so three rounds and in total that's 78 stitches so you can either count your rounds or count your stitches so I'm going to work 78 stitches all the way around and I will see you back that's three rounds I'll see you back when we're all done Okay, so for our next rounds, for round nine, 
um, we want to start with 10 single crochet just turn this around it starts to sort of cup a little bit so just turn it the right way around so you've got the bobbled side on the inside and then the flat stitches on the outside so we're going to start with 10 single crochet one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then we're going to place an increase into the next stitch just grabbing some extra yarn here there we go so we want um, increase next so that's two stitches into the next stitch it's one and two into the same space then we want to crochet a four single crochet so that's one two three four then we want another increase so two single crochets into the next stitch one two and then finishing the round with ten single crochet so that's one two three oops try that again three four five six seven eight nine ten so just finishing here you'll have a total of 28 stitches okay it's um you can see it's starting to sort of cup a little bit that's the top of the neck we're working down toward the base the next round you're going to single crochet all the way around all the way around here you want 28 single crochet and I shall um, meet you back at the beginning once you finish those ready for round 11 okay so we're at round 11 and we want to place 11 single crochets here into this next section that's two three four five six seven oops eight nine ten eleven then we want an increase in the next stitch there's two single crochet here that's one two in the same space then we want four single crochet in the next section one two three four then we want another increase stitch so it's two single crochet here in the next space so that's one two and then we want 11 single crochet in the next section that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so you should have 30 stitches in total here at the end of round 11 it's really starting to take take shape now and you'll see that one side is expanding further than the other in the next rounds um, well in round 12 we're going to be working all the way around in just single crochet so you want to single crochet 30 stitches all the way around for round 12 and I will meet you um, at the beginning or at the end once you finish that okay so we're round 13 now we're going to start with 10 single crochet 
That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we want to increase in the next two stitches, so two increases, so two stitches in here, one, two, and then two st stitches into the next, two single crochets in here. Then we're going to crochet, uh, crochet or work six single crochet into the next six stitches here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we want to do another two, one, two, increases in the next two stitches. Here's our first and our second increase, so two stitches here. Oops, I'm sorry, I keep coming off camera. Then we want to finish with ten single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So that's at the end of round 13. You should have 34 stitches. So just count your stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. There we go. So our next round will be 34 single crochet. So this is just a plain single crochet round all the way around for 34 single crochet. And I will meet you back at the end ready for round 15. So this is another increase um, round here and um, you can see that the belly, this is the belly part of the body that is expanding out. So the, the increasing on the one side creates that definite belly shape. So we're going to start with 10 single crochet first of all in this first section. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, and ten. And then we want to make an increase into the next stitch. So we want two single crochets into the next stitch here. That's one and two, then a single crochet into the next stitch, and then another increase. So two in here, one, two, and then we want eight single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, eight, and then we want an increase, single crochet, increase. So increase in here, that's two single crochets in this space, then a single crochet into the next stitch, and then two into the stitch here. That's your last increase of the round, and then you're going to finish with ten single crochet. Okay? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you should have a total of thirty eight stitches 
and for the next round 16 17 and 18 we're going to be working so three rounds all the way around a single crochet that's going to be a total of 114 stitches okay so three rounds 114 stitches and i'll see you back when you're done okay so that has really lengthened the body out that's the back side of the hippo the side you can see the <laughs> the belly shape when you look at it side on so for round 19 we want to start with 14 single crochet so one two three four oops just grab a little bit more yarn here And then we want an increase into the next stitch. So two single crochet into this space here. One, two, and then eight single crochet into the next section. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Then we want our increase here in this stitch, so two, sin two single crochets into this space, and then you're going to finish the round with 14 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now you should have forty stitches at the end of this round and for the next rounds twenty, twenty-one and twenty-two you're going to be working single crochet all the way around. Okay, so just continue working all the way around. So I've made a bit of a start already and I'll see you back when you're done. Okay, so we're decreasing um, our work now, working from here, narrowing the work all the way to the base. And we're going to start first of all with three single crochet. So one, two, three, and then we want to decrease twice. So this, these two stitches here, we're going to make a decrease and then again. So here's your first decrease and then your second decrease. And then we want to place six single crochet in the next section okay to this area here so six one two three four five six and then we're going to skip a stitch skip this one and then work another six so starting in the next stitch over six more along here okay so skip one and then six single crochet one two three four five six then skip another stitch so skip this one here and then we want two single crochet so 
there's our first and our second then we're going to skip another stitch so skip this one here and then we want six single crochet all along this section here so skip one and then six single crochet that's one two three four five six then we're going to skip again skip another set stitch and then six single crochet in the next section so skip and then six single crochet one two three four five six and then we want two decreases so in this this two here and this two here so this stitch and this stitch so that's your first decrease and then this stitch and this stitch that's your second decrease and then we're going to finish the round with three single crochet one two three and you should have a total of 32 stitches all the way around here okay you might want to think about stuffing it soon too this is starting to curve around the base so it, it will start to tighten up two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two twenty four twenty six twenty eight thirty thirty two okay good double check all right so round twenty four we want to start with fourteen single crochet Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Then we're going to skip a stitch and then skip this one here and then two single crochet. So it's one and two and then skip another stitch, skip this one here and single crochet fourteen. and 14 so you should have a total of 30 stitches now at the end here you can see it is starting to close up a little bit so don't leave it too late before before stuffing just checking my stitches that I have the right amount before I go on to round 25 yep there we go Okay, so with round 25, we're going to start with a decrease and then five single crochets. And we're going to do that five times. Okay, so decrease the first two and then um, single crochet five. We do that five times. So decreasing these two. That's one. And then five single crochet one two three four five then our second decrease 
in here. And then five single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. Then our third decrease in here. And then five single crochet. And then our fourth decrease in here and five single crochet one, two, three, four, five, and our last decrease here and five single crochet. And at the end of this round, you'll have 25 stitches. And I think I might, um, personally, I think I might stuff this now. <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. There we go. Last one there. Okay, so yeah, I'll fill this, I think, now. Okay, so ready for round 26, we're going to decrease four times and then we're going to single crochet. I'm going to do that twice, okay? I'm just getting some tension on my yarn here. I'm trying to hold down that stuffing whilst I do that. So decrease in here and we'll do that four times, okay? And then we'll do one single crochet. So here's our first decrease. I'm going to put a, a little bit of tension on the um, hook and yarn because I want to try and keep the stitches close together. I don't want too many gaps. This is our second decrease, our third decrease, our fourth decrease, and then after this one we're going to place one single crochet into the next stitch in here, and then we're going to repeat that process. So again, four decreases in each of these spaces here. So that's the first decrease. I'm just trying to hold the polyfill down a little bit here. It's getting caught. That's the second decrease. That's the third decrease. The fourth decrease. And then we want to single crochet in this next stitch here. Okay, so for this um, next round, we're going to decrease and then single crochet in um, each of the stitches around. So just finishing my last little bit there. Um, so it's a decrease, then a single crochet, and then decrease over these two, single crochet, decrease over the next two, single crochet, decrease, single crochet, all the way around. Okay, we're going to do that for six times and that pretty much finishes the end of the last round and then at the end of that we're going to slip stitch and cut a nice length of yarn to weave in and close the bottom. Okay, so just trying to push that down. I, I took out a couple of my stitches because the polyfill got stuck previously but just um, keep that down with your finger. So decrease here there we go and single crochet and decrease again and single crochet decrease here
single crochet. Decrease here. I take my finger out at this point because it can't fit. <laughs> And then single crochet. You can see how this hole is really starting to close up now. Decrease. Just be careful not to pick up the polyfill when you're going in here. Single crochet. Oopsie, I have got some caught. Let me just get that out. Here we go. So that's a lot smaller now that that hole will weave the yarns through and um, close that up. So I'll cut some of that off now and we can finish that up. Um, some people like to sort of weave in and out or I like to sew across the top of it. But it, by squishing this around a little bit you can push the stuffing into the belly area. Just sort of tease it around a little bit, squish it a bit. You'll need to do that anyway so you can see where to attach the arms and legs when we get to do those. There we go. Okay. So you can see you don't want to understuff this. You want to make sure there's enough stuffing so that you can really mould the shape. get that the way you want it to sit. Keeping the bottom flat as well. So I'm just going to thread up my darning needle and we'll close off the base of the body. So I just pick up a little bit of the yarn from the front stitch, from the front loop, rather, across two stitches. So I do two stitches at a time. So you should only have to do this three or four times. And then the hole will be closed fairly well. And I tend to pick up the, um, the little bits of the yarn on those front loops because it keeps the bottom fairly flat. I don't like any sort of bumps or lumps at the bottom so oops that's just come off my needle. Let me just thread that back through. So um, the sewing with these projects isn't that complicated, <laughs> it's very basic. So I know there is a little bit of sewing to do but it's very simple. And then um, I'll just make sure once I've gathered up the last little bits I'll make sure that I weave the um, rest of the tail into the work so that it doesn't come loose. like so and then I can just snip the rest of that off and then we will be ready to work on the uh, legs in a minute so that's the base I try and keep that base nice and flat okay so the head would then sit on top there I might use these extra pieces of yarn just to sort of hold the head in place but there we go that's how it would look once we put all that together but we're going to be doing the legs and the arms before we, we do that. And I've made a little um, dress as well, so um, I want to attach that first of all. So I'll get rid of this piece of yarn that I don't need. I've already got quite a long piece on the, on the head there that I'm going to use to sew. So I'll just get rid of this. Weave that through a few times so that that um, magic loop doesn't open up 
There we go. He's cute. Look at that. Well done. So that's the body finished. You've done really well to finish that off. And it's quite a, a quick little project, this too. You can make one of these in a day or an afternoon. So these are the legs that we're going to be looking at. So that's what it looks like finished. So I'll take you through how that's done. Okay. And that will be our next task. And we'll do that one together. Okay, so making a um, magic ring or um, a four chain loop. I'm going to try a magic ring um, this time round. I do alternate between the two methods. We want to place six single crochet into the center of the magic ring. So that's one, two, three, four five, six, there we go, pull on the tail there to close up that circle, there we go, you can either close up, you can either sew that um, loose piece in or I bring it to the front of my work out the way, it tends to get caught at the back, and then we're going to increase in this first stitch here and, and each stitch around, so we want two single crochet in here, And then two single crochet in the next in this stitch. Then two single crochet here. That's six. <laughs> two single crochet here. That's eight. Two single crochet in here. That's ten. And this is the last stitch we're working in, so two single crochet here, which means you should have 12 single crochet at the end of this round. Our next round here, we're going to do a single crochet and then a double, uh, sorry, single crochet and then an increase. So single crochet and then increase here in this stitch. Then single crochet again and then increase in the next stitch. Then single crochet here and increase in the next stitch. Single crochet here and increase. And you do that all the way around. You're doing it six times for a total of 18 stitches all the way around. Just double check that you have 18. Okay. And then four, five, and six is going to be single crochet all the way around. So that's three rounds. That's a total of 54 single crochet. Uh, so if you do those, I'll meet you uh, on the way back. I've put the um, link for the pattern down below. Now, in the pattern and in some of the photos, you'll notice that the bottom piece um, where we've finished all of this is in a different colour. So you might decide to do the feet in a contrast colour. Now, we get to this point here, and here is where we would then change back to the main colour. So these first... Um, six rounds would be your foot colour and then rounds um, seven, eight and nine, the next three rounds then would be going back to the main colour. So um, today of, of course we're just doing, um, the, we're just using the one colour here so we're not having to change colour. But what you want to do now is single crochet all the way around into the next three rounds. Okay, so I'm just separating that out a little bit um, from the last three rounds because this is where we did the color change. So single crochet all the way around 
for the next three rounds. So that's going to be a total of 36 stitches all the way around. Okay. Okay, so now we're looking at decreasing, narrowing the leg at this next section. All right. So to start the next round, which is round 10, we're going to decrease and then single crochet two, decrease, single crochet two. And we're going to do that for a total of five times. So decrease in these first two stitches here and then a single crochet and a single crochet and we'll do that again. Decrease here, single crochet, single crochet. Okay, third time, third decrease, single crochet, single crochet, fourth decrease, single crochet, single crochet, the last decrease, and then two single crochet. And you'll have a total of 13 stitches at the end of this round. So it will be a little bit tight and it can get a little bit fiddly. You see that's sort of the ball end of the foot, if you like. But that's got quite small there. So um, what we'll do now is we'll single crochet all, all the way around. We'll just double check that we've got the 13 stitches though, okay? Well, 13. Yep. Okay. 13 stitches. So now we're going to single crochet for rounds 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> so all the way around a single crochet for 130 stitches. So that's 10 rounds. And I'll meet you back here when you're done. I'm just I'm showing you. I've flattening the work so I'm squishing it between my fingers and then just rotating it around so that's one method of doing it because this is quite narrow so um, you can get a, a finger there into the work so you could do it this way if you wanted to you've just got to be careful not to catch the back of the work when you're doing this so that's one method or the second method is to stick your finger in there and crochet against your finger so that you don't run the risk of catching any of the stitches at the back of the work. So that's the second method there. The narrower um, the hole is when you're working on various things, um, the harder it is. So this working like this with it flat is sometimes a bit easier. It does mean you need to sort of rotate. You can only do a few stitches before having to rotate the work. But it does help. Okay so that's both our legs done now and <laughs> I've stopped them and I've tried to keep the stuffing as even as I possibly can and now we're going to look at positioning the legs. So I like to sort of have them bent inward slightly but um, it's you know personal preference where you want to put them. So um, sometimes I'll pin them in so I can see exactly where I want them. So just grabbing a few pins here, put one on one side, making sure I've got my belly in the center as well so that it's not off center like that. And then the other side, so they'll both sort of come in like that and they'll sort of gently curve in by the time I finish sewing them on. I just want to show you here as well, um, you can close that hole up at the top of the leg if you want to, just sew across the top, it's up to you. Um, I tend to sew both parts of it down anyway when I'm working but um, it, it's entirely up to you. If you want to make sure that the stuffing doesn't come out then just sew a couple of stitches across the top of the leg there. 
Okay, so I'm just sewing in and what I tend to do is I pick up um, one of the front stitches on both loops like so and then I pick up a stitch a little stitch on the body as close as I can to the leg and then another of the front stitches and again a stitch onto the body as close to the leg as possible just holding that in place so it doesn't move on me uh, and then one of the corner stitches as well I'll go through from the corner and pull through till I get to the center of the leg or the top part of the leg and then just to the other end because where I've um, finished my yarn it didn't finish right on the corner so then I can work the edge stitch there and attach that to that corner there we go and oops <laughs> it's got caught there we go so I just take each of the stitches along the leg and sew it to the side of the body there but I always choose a stitch on the body that's as close to the leg as possible so I'm taking up back stitches I'm taking up the front stitches now here I'm just going to the middle of the leg because I want to, for the leg to bend around the body slightly. I don't want it sticking out sideways. If I leave it, it's just going to stick out. So I want it to bend and hug around the belly. So I'm just going to hold that in place and I'm going to put the needle through. Uh, I might choose just a slightly longer needle, I think, um, but I'll just get a slightly longer one. bit bigger and then I'll push that all the way through to the other side I got caught on the stuffing a little bit there there we go so that will go through all the way unceremoniously squeeze the poor hippo <laughs> you're not going to pull the yarn tight otherwise you're going to misshape the body and the legs you just need to get that squeezed in so you can pull it through the other side but then make sure that you release the yarn through the body and through the legs so just reshape it release it make sure it's not squished okay that's one side, but then we've got to um, put the arm back through the other side. Okay, so that's pretty much where I want it there. Like that, that's how he's going to sit. Just making sure that nothing's been bent out of shape. That's exactly where I want it, so check and double check. So, I want to um, go back through to the other side now. So just holding everything down carefully. I'm going to close up this part of the leg on this side. So starting at this corner stitch. And grabbing a stitch on the body as close to the leg as possible. Okay. Try and get in there as close as you can. Take some of these pins out, I think, they're getting in the way. And then grab another stitch around the leg. and another stitch on the body. Now I'm not pulling very tight. I'm pulling it to secure it, but I'm not pulling it tight because if you pull it too tight, again, you'll misshape everything. You'll pull it out of shape, so. Again, picking up a stitch really close to the leg there. So 
So I'm going to be doing that on all of the stitches around the leg, front and back. Making sure that I also get the corner stitches as well, the top and bottom corners of the leg. through some of the bottom stitches just to make sure they're secure okay check that that's nice and even from the back as well make sure that it looks okay because at this point um, I can still change it if I need to check that the front still looks all right so these legs are going to eventually wrap around so what I want to do now is just um, try and secure that leg to the side of the body. So the same as what I did on the other side, bring the yarn up through to um, about the, sort of the center, roughly the center of the leg here, and then there we go, and then secure it. So I want the legs bent, so I'm going to. Just straighten the body up a little bit first. Make sure it's sitting at the right angle. And very carefully holding that in place where I want it. And sewing that part of the leg in. I'm going to pop it into part of the um, body here. So it comes out one side of the body. Just make sure that's not too tight on the leg. There we go. Like so. So you're pulling the thread firmly but not pulling it tight. And then going back through the other way because one thread is not going to secure that leg. So pushing it back through to the other side. And then working from the um, base normally. Again, pulling that out so that doesn't misshape the body. There we go. So that second um, piece of yarn through has really held that in place. But I'm going to um, do a few more of these sort of toward the base of the body as well. So come up through. And this time I'm going into the other leg. So that pulls that other leg in a little bit more as well now, but I will need to put a few more in, I think. Again, just making sure that that doesn't pull. There we go. So continue weaving in. I'm going to go to that center of this leg like I did with the other side and come up to the body like so and then back through the leg if you pull that tight you can give him a little belly button but <laughs> that's not the idea <laughs> okay and like I said before this is where I'll finish off at the base so I'll pick up a little part of the leg underneath and then attach that to the base so keeping it nice and flat the legs are nice and flat so it's going to sit nice and flat.
So I don't want to do it so many times that I um, pull everything out of shape, but I want to do it enough that I'm satisfied that the legs will hold in place and they're not going to pull apart. Then um, I will just thread the rest of that through so that it's secure. And then once I'm happy it's secure, I'll cut the rest of the yarn off. Okay, just take the pins out here. So that's the two legs done. Um, attached to the body, it's really taking shape now. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, we'll be working on the arms next, so uh, get ready for the next step. Okay, so ready for the arms. We're going to make a magic ring, or you could do a four chain loop. It's up to you, but I'm using a magic ring for the arms. Making two of these arms. And we're going to single crochet six stitches into the center of the ring. And then just pull your tail yarn tight to close up the hole. Yep, we've got six there. And then we're going to increase in each of the six stitches. So there's an increase into the first stitch. And then in each stitch all the way around. So there we go. So you'll have your six stitches and then these increases all the way around. And you'll have 12 stitches at the end of this round. And then at the end of this round, we want four rounds of single crochet. So all the way around, single crochet. One, two, three, four rounds. Okay. So that's going to be a total of 48 stitches all the way around. Just with as with the feet, this first piece here, you might do in a contrast yarn like this maybe. And then from here on in, all the way up, that would be your main body colour. Okay, that's if you were um, following the pattern. So the next three rounds here will all be single crochet. So you're going to crochet 36 stitches all the way around. And I'll meet you back once you finish that. Okay, so now we're going to decrease um, the next part of the arm, so it's going to narrow as it goes up here. So we're going to want to, so this, this piece here, it narrows just at the end near the shoulder. So we're going to make a decrease and then single crochet. I'm going to do that three times. So here's our first decrease. And then single crochet. Our second decrease single crochet third decrease and single crochet so you'll have a total of nine stitches and this is a very very small space to work in so I probably will flatten my work when I do this because I won't be able to get my finger in here. So the next four rounds then, all the way around, will be single crochet. So that's going to be a total of 36 stitches. 
So I'm going to flatten my work here and just do a couple of stitches at a time and then rotate it round. So one, oh, just be careful not to pick up the, any of the stitch at the back. Two, and then rotate it round. I'm sort of squeezing it to open the hole up a little bit so that I don't catch the back. Like so, you see that? So rather than complete, com keeping it completely flat, um, I'm just using my finger, thumb and fingers to open that up just a little bit so I can get the hook in there without too many problems. So single crochet all the way around for 36 stitches and I'll meet you back at the end. Okay, so that's that finished. Now we're going to need to stuff this. I'll cut that piece of yarn off so that I can sew it onto the body. So enough length there for sewing on. I'll need to um, fill this and then I'll need to weave in my ends here at the end. And when I use the polyfill I just do very small amounts. I try not to stuff too much in at once so I, so I have little balls of polyfill and then I just use the end of my scissors or a bamboo needle works really well too. Or a chopstick even. <laughs> So very small balls of yarn just going in there. I'm going to make sure I push that right down into the hand part. I think doing it this way sometimes using the very small pieces that, um, as you go helps maintain the shape a little bit as well. So you want to do this so that it matches the other side, uh, the other arm that you've made. Okay, just squeeze them, check that they're both the same width, that you're not overstuffing it or understuffing it. So finish doing that and then we can look at um, positioning the arms and sewing them on. So we'll put them in the shoulder area here. Now before I um, do anything, I want to check the placement of the arms. Um, so it would be roughly there that you'd, if that looks all right to you. That's roughly where you place them. But I have um, a dress to put on that's sewn in. So I'm just going to place the dress onto the hippo first, like so. It's cute, isn't it? <laughs> I'll put the link on for this little, um, it's so easy to make, really, really, and I think the effect is really cute as well. Um, but I need to put the um, dress on um, so that I can get a rough idea as to where I want the arms. Um, I mean, they may be in the same position, but, so that's, I think, about right, the top of the just near the shoulder, near the neck there. That's going to be about right, I think. But I might just pin that in um, and make sure that I'm happy with that. Put that through. Oh no, that's probably not. That's probably too thick to put that through. I might have to pin it, I think. It's also a bit tight. No, I'll use pins. So I'm very fussy, <laughs> as you can see, I, I like to make sure everything sits straight and that I'm happy with it. We just place a few pins in here and then I'll do the same on the other side just to make sure that I'm happy with how everything's going to sit. That dress looks a bit skew-whiff, so I might have to pull that around a little bit, I think. 
turn it around a little bit, rotate it around. That's that's a bit better. Otherwise, it's going to look like it's sitting sideways. There we go. So I think that will work. I'll pin those on. And then I might have to very carefully try and pull pull the arms through the dress to keep them in place. And the head will go on the top. So the dress won't come off. That'll be a permanent fixture. So the head will then be sewn on afterwards. So I could even maybe use a bit of a marker or some chalk. Um, to mark those arms. I could try and take the dress off, but I think I might end up pulling everything, so. Okay, so as with the legs, um, you can just uh, sew the end of your arm closed if you want to, or you can pick up here, I'm picking up some of the back stitches, and then I'm gonna pick up the body stitches, and then I'll pick up some of the front stitches on the arm, and again, pick up some body stitches. Make sure I also grab the corner stitches here on the corner of the arms. And when you pick up the body stitches, you want them as close to the arm as you can possibly manage. So I'll finish sewing those on and then we'll look at constructing the rest of the body. Okay, so the arms are on. I need to um, pop the dress on. Just pull those gently through. There we go. Make sure the dress is nice and straight. Of course, if you're not putting a dress on it, then that's fine. You can just sew the head straight on. But I'm, I'm going to need to put this, <coughs> excuse me, put this dress on first. And then I'll need to sew the head on. As mentioned, I'll um, try and get a pattern for this dress and I'll put the link on. Uh, it won't be on straight away um, because it might take me a week or two to get the pattern organised and a video for that done as well. So I'll, I'll once that's done, I'll add the link to this video later on. So I've just pulled through some of the um, loose strands of yarn on the body there and on the from the arms so that I, I can use them if, if need be. I won't cut them off. Oh, yes, I will. I'll cut them off. <laughs> I'll cut one off. That was a bit short, that one. But I'll keep the other one. It's nice and long. I might need it. I'm not sure. I don't want to run out of yarn when I'm sewing these pieces together. So if you remember from part one of the video, I um, finished the yarn up so that it was on the neck part of the head. So I'm just going to position that sort of toward the side a little bit there. Okay. That's where I'm going to start sewing. Oh, come back. There we go. So I want to, same as before, try and get that in the position that I want it, the angle that I want it. And then when I'm happy, try and keep everything together with my hands and sew into the neck of the body out the other side. I'm sorry, I've come off camera. And then out the other side 
So I've literally gone from one side of the head and the neck to the other side of the body. And if it's a bit firm, <laughs> I usually use some scissors to pull that through. I've just moisturized my hands so they're a bit slippery. <laughs> I just pull that through. Okay, now it's going to be a bit wobbly to start with because obviously we've, we've um, only got one piece of yarn through here at the moment. So I'm going to just pull it firmly but not too firm. Try and get everything positioned where I want it, ready for the next pass. Okay. About there, try and hold everything down. There we go. Grab the body, grab the head, and then back through. And this time I'm tilting the neck up slightly, like so, so that I can come up through the neck and through the head. So everything's just tilted a little bit so I can see where I'm going. I'm going to come up into the side of the cheek area there, roughly where the eyes are, and pull that through. Okay, again, it's still a little bit wobbly, but we're going to fix that by adding some additional stitches around the back of the neck and then um, some final sort of weaving through at the end. So again now just trying to hold everything steady from the side of the face there I'm going to go back into the head and then to the back of the neck so into the neck and out the back like so and that gets me in a position ready to stitch the back of the head to the back of the neck. So again, pulling that firmly, I don't want to pull it, um, pull the head out of shape, so I'm just going to pull that yarn out a little bit there, because it's just puckered a little bit. There we go. So just checking again that it's the right angle. And now I can pick up some back stitches on the back of the head here. I don't know if you can see that. So picking up some of the stitches here at the back of the head, not too high up, like so. And then try not to get that caught around the arm. And then the actual back of the body. And do that. Okay, so I'll um just finish that off so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so once I am happy that the angle is right, it's not wobbly anymore, it's nice and secure, I normally position both yarns so that they're at the back of the head and then I can just tie it off. Like so. And then I'll need to cut those pieces of yarn really close to underneath the neck there so that they can't be seen, so the ends can't be seen. You could thread them through if you wanted to instead. But cutting them off here, you won't be able to see them. There we go. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. <laughs> I'll pro uh, probably a little flower on the dress too. Right, so bottom. We need to put the tail on next. So that'll be the last step. Okay, so grabbing my... Um, I'm just using a, a loose piece of yarn that I that I uh, cut off before I'm doing a slip knot. Put the slip knot onto the hook and I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to single crochet and then single crochet the rest of the stitches. So that's two, three, and, oh, sorry, chain, and then a slip stitch 
into the last stitch here and pull that through. Then I'm going to tie these off and these will be the um, sort of fluffy ends of the tail, the bushy end of the tail. Sort of pull that tight and then tie that off. And then I'll just snip them this same length. Just We don't want a massive long tail, so just a little bit of bushy tail at the end. And then using the end of your pin or a, a needle, just pull those strands of yarn apart so they become really fluffy. There we go. fluffing that up it's really cute <laughs> and then I'll grab um, an additional piece of um, scrap yarn that I've got here the same color thread up my darning needle and then I'm going to sew that to the base of the body And there you have it. Well done. Excellent job. I really hope you've enjoyed making this project with me. I crochet along Hippo. I've um, added a couple of flowers. I've added a flower to the dress and a flower to the head of the Hippo. And some um, matching yarns. Using the um, colour palette that I showed you at the beginning of the um, video. I've got the link at the bottom for the original pattern. Um, it's made in different colours, but you could use any colour you like. And it has all the accessories to go with it. I really hope you've enjoyed making this with me. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, um, part one and part two of the Hippo Crochet Long, please subscribe, um, click the like button, share it with anybody you think will really enjoy making this too. And um, thank you so much for supporting me. And I really look forward to um, you visiting again next time. Thank you.